What's up guys? Welcome back to another pottery video. I'm John the Potter and today this kiln is full of completely finished glazed pottery. So excited. It's like pretty early in the morning and uh, just a little short walk out to my studio. Oh, I just love it so much. I love it. I love it. How are you doing today? I hope you're doing well. If you're making pots, I hope your pots are coming out well. If you're doing other work, I hope your other work's going well. Sorry, I uh, didn't really prep my looks for this video. So you get the raw, right, rolled out of bed John the Potter. That's what this is. How do you like this mug? Isn't this mug just, woo! So I wanna say shout out to the sponsor of this video, Mako Colors. Mako makes all the, pretty much all the glazes I'm doing right now are Mako. Um, I'll still do some of my old glazes, but I'm having just so much fun with all their colors. They make a lot of different ceramic products. So go check out the link in the description below, Mako products or makocolors.com slash John the Potter and uh, check them out. Thank you guys so much for sponsoring this video. Hi, this is uh, future John, uh, just checking in with you. So we finally have some pots for sale on the Etsy page. Whenever this video goes up, we're gonna put we're gonna do an Etsy restock the next day. So check out the description in this video to find out when these pots, plus probably a couple more, will go up on Etsy. So sorry it's been like forever since I've done an Etsy restock, but we finally have some pots going up. So check it out if you want to. Oh yeah, this is what comes out of the kiln, so stay tuned because it's a pretty fun one. All right, we're gonna try this kiln unloading slightly different than we've done. So you can kind of see it come out of the kiln right now and then we're just gonna put it on the shelf. Um, we're gonna see how that goes. So if you have any comments about anything, as always, leave them in the description below. Um, if you're new here, consider subscribing. Thank you. Let's do it. I've only had like this much coffee, so I'm not as normally as excited as I normally am. I kind of miss the endless amounts of coffee that I would have at Mocha Monkey. Oh, look at that hair. Whew. All right, so first things we got more tiles for that tile backsplash. So this is in the, I think it's Aurora Green and Sandstone. This is that copper ore. I, it's like so cool, I like love it. It's pretty drippy so I added some water to it and it still looks good. Here's a plate, this is for a big planter. So this is in that Norse blue. Oh. So here's the planter that goes with that plate. This was thrown for one of the new plants that we have. Obviously, if you follow me, you can realize that we're kind of super into plants right now. Both at the Milk Monkey and at home. EC and I are both kind of into, into some planters, plants and planters. So these two are that, here's that, this is copper ore over sandstone. And that is really, really cool. Super cool. And I love how it drips down, just those brown drips. Ah, that is an awesome mug, I love those. That's really different than a lot of stuff that I would do normally. So definitely one of the new top combos. Okay, and then here, this is an interesting part about ceramics and pottery. So this is Aurora Green over Green Opal, which I've, it's been really, really good. Let me show you. So normally it's been looking like this, and this has been like super cool. I've been like, yeah. But this is on a different clay body. It's on like a dark uh, iron stoneware and it's new mixed. So either it's too thin and it doesn't come out like this or this is just how it looks on a really dark clay body. So the clay can make like a huge difference. So unfortunately I did a bunch of them because I expected it to work out perfectly. So there's some stuff that's cool like that part. So I think, you know, it's not my favorite look, but I do think that somebody, somebody will like it. It's kind of rustic. Okay, and then the last thing, so we go every year for the 4th of July, we go up to my wife's cabin. And it's super fun, it's a big party, and her dad, my father-in-law, sends out emails um, and the whole saying is like pump it up. So getting ready for the fourth and like having the time there. So I made some like red, white, and blue mugs with America on it that say pump it up. Actually they're not mugs, they're cups. And so the blue turned out a little darker blue than I wanted, but. So I, I underglazed 
Oh, the bottom. I don't know why that's stuck. Shouldn't really stick to the underglaze, but maybe I'll try and put another glaze on top of there. Oh, yes. Here's where we get to the good stuff. Gorgeous. Sandstone from Mako. And then we got, we got a bunch of these. I mean, this, I put this on my Instagram and got a lot of people. Woo! Those are gonna be, those are gonna sell like hotcakes at Monkey Monkey. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. There's those four. God, I just like can't get over that. Sandstone from Mako. Thanks Mako for making such a cool glaze. And then here is, this is the blue surf on top and the sandstone on the bottom. And I think actually I like it a little more when you can see a little more sandstone. So I'll try and get that going. Like that one. Like that one's good. Ah, oh, here. That's the blue surf over sandstone. And I wanted it to drip a little more than that, but you can't always get what you want. Another blue surf over sandstone. Kind of got some pinholes in there. I, I learned so much from you guys. If you're getting pinholes consistently, what do you do? Comment below, tell me what you do. Do you put it, do you have it hold for, like soak for five minutes? There's, there we got the drips going a little bit more. Still not too much. There we go, look at that, nice drip. Nice drip. Sweet. All those will be at the Mocha Monkey very soon. Yes! Oh, so cool. I love it. I love it so much. Look at all those sweet drips. So these, this, this is the same as this, but it dripped way better because it must drip on this clay, I think, because I did almost the exact same thing. And this is just different clay. This is B clay. And I think that the B clay is so smooth. I, this might be totally wrong, but it seems to drip way better on this uh, like porcelain stoneware clay other than this straight dark iron stoneware. Like that's one of the things that's the most fun and the most frustrating about pottery is you like half the time you don't even know what's going on. You're just like trying things and then if it works, you just try and do it again. Ooh, that's nice. Norse blue over sandstone. Really nice. I like it. Oh, I like it a lot. So then there's in that new extruder that I have over there, that Brent extruder, there's two kind of handles that I like the most for the die set. And the smaller one looks like this. Yeah, those are really nice. I like those a lot. Norse blue didn't really like, it, it has a nice fade into the sandstone, but it doesn't like drip like the blue surf does. And then here's two more of those. These are American flag cups, red, white, and blue. Red, white, and blue. Which, like I said, the blue didn't turn out as well as I expected it to. And then the rest of this stuff in here is more of these sandstone Minnesota mugs. Which, there's a bunch of them. Which, honestly, the first time something comes out cool, you're like, holy crap, that's amazing. And then once you do it like a thousand more times, it's still really cool, but it's not quite the same feeling as that first time. That's like, it's like on the wakeboard, when you're like trying to trick after trick, the first time you land it, you're like, oh, so good. Or like on a surfboard, the first time you land a 360, or that's like kind of like when you nail a glaze, the first time is like so good. And then after that, you're kind of like, you expect it. You're like, oh yeah, that's the way it looks. Looks cool every time. And when it doesn't happen, then it's really frustrating. Life lesson, keep trying new things. <laughs> that's what I take from it, I don't know. Okay, and then here just plain sandstone over nothing. <laughs> um, but this is on the dark iron stoneware clay, and this is on buff stoneware. So can you see? Can you see the difference? It's just a little darker, got a little more tan. This is a little lighter, a little more beigey. I think I like it better on the buff stoneware. So you know, when I first started this channel, the only clay that I had used for years, where's my coffee? Where's my coffee? They, all these mugs look the same. <laughs> oh, there it is. Okay, what was I saying? When I first started this channel, all I'd used was buff stoneware forever, right? 
I, I just like, I used it, it was good, I liked it. And then, you know, Continental Clay, we did a sponsorship together and they're like, you should try some different clays. So then I tried the Dark Iron Stoneware, which I've been using now for a little while. And I tried Bee Clay, which is like a whiter porcelain clay, which I started doing the marbling thing with. And I liked them both. But I also realized that like, I really like buff stoneware, like the look of it. Like, it's really good. Like the plain clay of this dark iron, I don't think I like that as much as the, just the, the plain old buff stoneware. And then the last two things in this kiln are sandstone mugs, ha, <laughs> same. All right, so this, this is more of a typical kiln for me where we have sets of things. We don't have like a thousand different colors like we've had in the last two uh, kiln unloadings. But man, that sandstone is coming out. Whew. So good. So shout out to our sponsor, Mako Colors. Thank you guys so much for sponsoring me, my videos, this uh, channel. So fun to have the glazes. I know a lot of potters out there mix their own glazes, but I've kind of made a conscious effort. I have mixed my own glazes before, but it's one of those things where I don't want to deal with the chemistry aspect of it. Like you can pick and choose the different parts of the pottery process that you want to really dive deep into. And for me, I've chosen, you know, the throwing, the form, the shape, um, and the overall process and the selling, the business part of it. That's what the parts that I really care about that take a lot of time. And some people want to dive deep into the glaze chemistry and that's great, but I prefer to buy glazes and leave that up to experts and professionals like the people over at Mako Colors like that's their job, that's what they do, is they wanna come up with amazing glazes that are food safe, that work consistently, and I wanna just buy them from them. So that's my take on the, if anybody out there is, I mean, mixing your own glazes, you can learn a lot, you can do a lot, you can make the fine tune changes that you need to, and it's certainly a big part of the process. But for me, like there is enough other stuff to do besides worrying about the uh, mixing and making of glazes. So that's why I prefer to use commercial glazes. There you go. You can decide for yourself what's good for you. All right. Oh, hey again, Future John here. Just reminding you that these pots are gonna be up for sale. So check out that to restock. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Like, share, comment, all the things. Follow us on Instagram, follow us on Patreon, all of those things. And we will see you in the next video. Shh.